James one nineteen through twenty. Therefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. There are many people in this world, even among those who call themselves Christians, that are living in hate, anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness. All these have one and the same root, namely, a heart that is not fully submitted to and living in the love of God. 1 John 4, 7-8 through 8 tells us, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every man that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Most of us are not perfect in godly love yet, but if we are truly in Jesus Christ, we should at least be growing in the same pure and holy love that Jesus himself displayed and taught. John thirteen thirty four through 35 A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Love isn't just a feeling or an emotion that is beyond our control. It's also a command from Jesus, and commands can be obeyed or rebelled against as a matter of choice although it should be noted that obedience to God is rewarded by him, while rebellion will be punished by him. Matthew 6, 9-15 After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is an act of love and obedience to God. Again, we have to choose to obey the command to forgive, to live this way. John fourteen fifteen, If ye love me, keep my commandments. What are his commandments? John fifteen nine through 10 As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. If we love Him, we will love each other as well. Romans thirteen nine through 10 For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of God's law, not just the old law from the old covenant God made with Abraham, but also the law delivered to us by Jesus Christ, who brought us into the new covenant. Love is a requirement of this new covenant. 1 John 2, 9 through 11 He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. 1 John 4.20-21 If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Loving your brother is not limited to your biological brother but also includes all other Christians, even the ones who are not your favorite Christians in the world. 
and in some cases it can even include unbelievers. We are all imperfect and need to grow to be more like Jesus. Sometimes we need to be patient with those who haven't grown as much as we might think they should have. Hate is not from God, nor is it consistent with his love. 1 John 3.16-19 Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. Sometimes loving others also means offering help, or giving to them, if and when we can even if it's someone who can never repay what is given. I will share my playlist on giving at the end of this video so you can learn the biblical instructions on that. Luke 6, 43-46 Jesus said, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble bushes gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? How can we call him Lord if we refuse to obey his command to love and forgive others? Galatians 5.19-26 Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The difference between the good fruit of the Spirit and the corruption of the flesh is clear. Hate, anger, bitterness, and unforgiveness are corrupt fruits of the flesh. It's time that we who claim to be Christians nail these things to the cross of Christ so we can live free of them and walk in His love and forgiveness. Perhaps one problem is that you never really surrendered yourself to God in the first place. That starts with repentance of sin turning away from it, and turning to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. That starts with a simple little prayer, like this. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you rose again the third day. I repent of my sins, so please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart, and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you. So I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of his will, so you can live out his holiness in your life. If you have ever wished you could read the story of Jesus' life from all four Gospels chronologically, you might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites, also included in the video description. Thank you for watching. May you live and walk in God's love.